drive time session with the property fixer and the alternative business property solutions community good morning to everybody good morning to all our regular listeners people who log in regularly what interesting times we were talking about tier five we weren't quite sure but apparently tier five has arrived so one of the questions for today is is tier five going to lead to more job losses and obviously the question of the week or the saying of the week is if you don't do your car until you can't nothing is gonna work unless you don't do i hope that's clear right lucky singh morning sir how are you good morning good morning good morning good morning sir top man london the mover shaker maker quaker raker saker faker blaker blade blade is the one man against the system mr lucky singh out there trying to create an alternative business and property community another way of doing business and i think now with tier five uh, coming on board it's even more po uh, possibly uh, poignant that we're trying to look for other ways of doing business because tier five is definitely going to have its own effect morning lucky so tier five what's the difference between tier four and tier five uh, i think uh, we put down tier five last night as a topic um what but what happened is eight o'clock last night was an announcement for a national lockdown so there's now a national lockdown till the 15th of february okay yeah. so because so that's there's a national tier five lockdown, is it lockdown, they've also uh decided to close down all schools as well um so uh, i think this morning they're talking about uh, the biggest wastage in food ordering for schools in the history of schools so all that's going to go to landfill because they're not going to be able to use all that food um they're also talking about the police now there's 1300 police which have got corona and uh but they haven't been vaccinated but they haven't been put on the priority list so uh there's a huge matter of uh, discussion debate going on uh, there's a couple of interviews with the major newspapers last night and they're quite disparaging about uh, boris johnson and what he's done in the way he's handled everything and they were saying you know uh it's basically <laughs> telling people oh, yes everything will be sorted in the next couple of months next couple of months next couple of months uh let's push on um but it never but people aren't seeing the the end of uh, the situation it seems to be getting from uh, uh bad worse to even worse so i think that's right. the sort of state of affairs at the moment and uh so it's look, looking ugly out there i mean uh we are blessed as an organization uh that uh, we're actually an essential worker with two businesses that uh, we run uh, so i work for a part of a charity in my company so that's essential work and also uh so we're actually if we get stopped by the police i've actually got a certificate to say that uh, we're allowed to be traveling as well as our staff so that's good for our company so we're going to be out and about um but obviously limit limiting the amount of uh travel we'll be doing as well as meetings trying to do as much as we can from home mm -hmm. because it is getting uh, very very sort of serious out there in terms of the amount of people now that getting um, 
COVID-19, it's literally an all-time high and the highest death cells in the last two days. So uh, it's uh, quite a scary situation for a lot of people out there. And uh, but it's becoming, all of a sudden, it's becoming very real. Okay. It's really, it says you chopped me there, Lucky Singh. Big shock on tier five lockdown and obviously uh, the effect it's going to have on uh, job losses as well. I, you know, I, can, I can well imagine when you're being restricted in your movement and the only reason you have access to your car and mobility is because you are regarded as a an essential service for the charity. Right. Waiting backstage, we have the lovely Karen Williams. We're going to invite her in, uh, just like, well, we continue with Luther Van Ross until I decide I'm somebody else. But Luther Van Ross inviting in the lovely Carolyn Williams, just like Maria Carai. Carolyn, are you there? Yes, I am. Wow. Hiya, oh. Karen, how are you doing? I'm well, happy to be with you. Grim news, but uh, Wales was in lockdown before Christmas Day. Right, so okay, are you? So, so the whole of UK now is tier five, which means everything's being locked down. Yeah. Is that right? Is Wales also fully locked down now, yeah? Yes, we locked, locked down first. You were locked down first, right? Okay. So, what do you think um, you are going to uh, see happening in the next one month or so? It's going to be about, uh, I think, six weeks, isn't it? Seven until the 15th of February. Why do you think it, the lockdown has been so sharp and so severe? Because the death rate. The death rate's going up. The national health has struggled. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, so okay, national health struggling. Lucky says that the police haven't even been considered in the initial vaccinations. Uh, probably he's saying this thirteen hundred of police officers. I don't know, uh, is it for front line, is it senior, and is it the junior police sergeants or the junior constables? But 1,300, I'm not sure if that number is UK-based or is it London-only? London, London only. Right, okay, so I don't know what the numbers are going to be for the rest of the country. Right, so Lucky Singh, um, what do you think is going to happen for employment if everybody is going to be locked down what effect do you think this is going to have are furloughs going to be brought back in uh what, what do you think is going to happen can you give us your summary of where you think things are going for the next eight seven weeks say uh, i think uh, the writing's on the wall really because uh, you can't really sustain an economy um with uh, the whole of your population really literally being in uh, lockdown for uh, for a year and uh it's basically it's a very uh, tough situation it's a stalemate situation it's not uh, much that uh, can be done apart from uh, uh we have to probably work within like our communities and actually support each other uh, and I think uh, keep talking, keep uh, positive, and um, really, uh, uh, I think the only you could sort of say respite there maybe is that uh, there is going to be a target for the fifteenth of February, uh, eighteen million people with vaccines. Um, but there's also a caveat to that vaccine, which is uh, that they're saying there's a strain 
in South Africa. There's three strains in South Africa of uh, of COVID-19. One particular strain uh, is not something that uh, uh, can be um, got rid of by the vaccine. So the answering questions. So you could sort of say the good news is that uh, they're going to try and immunize um, some incredible, I think, I think they've got 100 million vaccines ordered now and they're trying to vaccine about 9 million people per week. So I think we need at least two or three doses of it over a period of a couple of weeks. So, uh, so I think it may be too little too late because the government has got reputation now for being quite awkward saying things and not really delivering on anything. Uh, and I think they are sort of like a rabbit caught with the sort of headlight type situation. So I think it is very, very scary for a lot of people out there who rely upon retail, rely upon their going to work and being in lockdown for them. I think, uh, if anything, the biggest issue I can see is their mental health uh, is one of them. And the other biggest issue is um, I can't see the economy really recovering from this for the next uh, about five or ten years because I think it's not really. Carolyn, uh, with all that news that's come out, I mean, Lucky's given a lot of information there about the different variations, etc. Well, where do you think uh, things are going in Wales? Then, how do you think? uh you're going to be sort of managing yourself because i think there's restrictions like you can only go out once a day to do exercise and that too possibly in your uh, back garden i think probably, i don't think they are allowing people to even uh, meet in pairs you're not allowed to meet anybody outside um that's a strict no-no um well, how is it? How do you think it's going to operate? What do you think is the you know what's the reality of this? Is it possible to be locked? Impossible is something that we are all being frightened to death with impossibilities, but nothing is impossible. So yeah, you've got to you've got to work with within the parameters, the rules. You have to obey them, otherwise you're going to get COVID. So you do mm -hmm. have to do the safe distancing. Um, as a person, you know, I've just remained you know, with my family and friends who work online. And that's how I survive. And I think that's how most people will have to conduct their business online. Mm -hmm. But Lucky's comment about not, um, I mean, I was married to a senior police officer, so I understand the severity of that. But they haven't even done the rollout for their own uh, frontline workers. So if you imagine frontline workers, you know, are getting sick, there is less less staff in hospital. That's a real issue. It is a real issue. And so we, what we've got is um, a panic because they haven't rolled out, they haven't done the test, they haven't rolled out the the, the vaccine for people that are the frontline workers. So it, it's not rocket science. Okay. So, you know, common sense belief that that you know we can do it online and does, but um, it realistically needs to roll out okay that's that's okay that's one way of looking at caroline because you seem to be very level-headed you're able to manage the variation the shift in environment it's an environment that's being created and you're right it's a bit of uh, hype, it's a bit of uh, hysteria and a bit of uh, paranoia, uh, a cocktail put together and then, uh, you know, a bit of forced uh, regulation, you know, to put this in, to spice it all up on top. You you know, you seem quite uh, clear. Uh, like you think, are people that clear? I mean, are people that level-headed? Uh, do you find people are uh, as calm and practical as is 
uh, Caroline or Caroline. Um, do people, I mean, are, are people uh, each different and each person uh, behaves differently when they are told of or regulated to be locked in and they're not allowed to meet or they're not allowed to go out and you know like the restrictions are very severe if you look at them you're only allowed to go out once a day apparently for exercise please tell me how do people in general cope with that because it's a it's a group isn't it it's a mass of people being uh, ordered to behave in a certain way what do you think is going to happen can people manage that for seven eight weeks yeah, to be honest with you, uh, with the amount of, um, you could call it scaremongering, you could call it uh, actual information, I think uh, this is probably like the worst crisis uh, in the last hundred years for uh, uh, any economy, let alone the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, you use the stats yesterday of about 2.2 billion people in the lockdown with the pandemic at a certain point in time last year. So I think uh, Germany, as well as a couple of other countries, yeah. are now in a similar sort of lockdown in France and Germany, I think. Um, so I think there's a huge, huge uh, um, flurry of people now. Sort of probably, I think they're just probably happy to follow the rules because uh, they they are probably seeing loved ones sort of passing away. I mean, uh, I've talked to a couple of people with COVID-19 on conference calls in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is, there's about 12 different strains of the virus. And uh, mm -hmm. you get a, one a particular strain, which is, uh, um, let's just say, high impact. And, uh, potentially, it's life-threatening. So, okay. so the question is, the lockdown in the vaccines are uh, probably say the only way at the government level that uh, they can solve the problem. But really, mm -hmm. you've got to look after your own personal health. So what I'm doing, I think let's not worry too much about what's going on. Let's worry about what we can do ourselves with, with our own capacity. So, for example, uh, one of the measures I've taken is uh, to, you know, um, at least be doing hardcore exercise for an hour, at least twice a week, the minimum. So literally, you know, full cardio. Um, so I've made that uh, an, not uh, something I'd like to do, it's something I have to do now. Um, so I've done one session yesterday, so I've got to hit one more this week, and uh, just going for, uh, you know, just basically keeping yourself active is going to be very important because just if you are if you get caught up in the mental health with the, all the problems that are out there, that in itself is actually going to reduce your immune system and you're more likely to not be able to fight a strong strain of the virus. Okay, that's interesting you say that, Lucky, because I think um, they say a lot of disease, a lot of, of illness uh, comes from the mind or a mindset, and, you know, and the illness could be regarded as a reflection of your mental condition. Uh, before I ask Carolyn what she thinks about that statement, got a shout out for Mr. Rajesh Malotra. We have Kaylee. Uh, we have John Smith, uh, Mina, uh, Amar, and well, Mandy and Zishan, all of them. Big shout out to you all uh, during this new lockdown tier five sort of drastic situation that we're in. Another point that was made, I think there's been a big comparison between uh, Boris Johnson and everybody else. Uh, he seems to take a long time in taking decisions. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon, Scottish uh, minister, she um, announced the lockdown at two o'clock. Boris Johnson decided to announce it at 8 p.m. Six hours of difference. 
So I think people are sort of like, there's probably been a bit of bad press on Mr. Johnson uh, for not reacting quick enough, I think. He probably takes a longer time in deliberating things. Probably not the best of uh, decision makers. Very animated, probably not a strong decision maker. Caroline, what do you say? Well, I want to um, compliment Lucky on taking up cardio because, as you know, my, I have a pr fitness professionality and I'm still a fitness professional from the point of view, I believe, that you have to move. And it's how you move. And yes, if you look at uh, how UK is being handled badly, everybody's locked down. So mentally, you're locked down. So that's the first thing you've got to look at is your mental um health and once you've understood that it's not down and locked it's up and out because it's about your own mentality and how you perceive your own um health in terms of priorities the priority you look at the priorities mental health is way up there physical health is way up there spiritual health is way up there if you've got the compliment and not everybody has but if you've got the compliment of that understanding, you can retain a peaceful center. And it's about inner peace at the end of the day. And that's what it is because um, everybody is driven to panic and it's driven by fear. Okay, okay. Kylie obviously agrees that each individual uh, possibly reacts differently. And I think it's quite easy because we're quite focused and people we, are blessed to have on on the drive time with us. Most of them have a very positive outlook for things. I mean, we've had in the last two weeks, we've had lots of lovely individuals come on with a very positive attitude to the situation. Uh, and I think it's inspirational. I think anybody watching the drive time with the alternative business and property solutions community, uh, if there haven't been, will definitely uh become motivated or want to see you know comments coming in from different people uh rajas also says <coughs> he probably does a bit more of uh, a bit of yoga as well i think or breathing exercises so it is about the balance i think uh the mental and the physical and i think uh Karen says correctly uh it's all up there three of them are up there spiritual mental physical now which way around do you put them i probably it's going to be a a question i'm going to put to you lucky Singh, first which way round do you put the mental the physical the spiritual what do you do first you need to concentrate on your spirituality do you need to focus on physicality or should you just be focusing on your mental condition how to uh, reject all negative messages coming through whichever source, whether it's your uh, group chat on WhatsApp or Facebook, or whether it's on the television. What do you do first, Lucky? What do you do first? And I'm not saying this is a hard and fast rule, but it's, it's nice to see what successful people are doing so that others can actually work out the, the way around to do it and the reasons for Lucky. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a very <laughs> individual. Coming to <laughs> Carolyn. Thank you very much, Carolyn. You're wonderful. You've attracted five hearts in today. No one sends me a heart. Always when the good looking young ladies come on. Lucky Singh, sometimes, I think. So, Lucky Singh, answer the question, please. Which way around are you going to put them? So, I think, <clears throat> I think getting the basics right is important first of all and it's all psychoschematic in the sense that uh, if one thing's not done it affects the other it's a bit like a effective running car without no petrol uh, then you can't really drive your car and if uh, the tires are punctured it's not going to work you're not going to be able to get very far so you're going to do the basics first so number one i think is having a clean gut is critical so it's very clean difficult. Gut. Okay. Clean, clean gut. gut. <clears throat> clean gut, meaning clean gut. what you put in that your body. Like a 
clean so gut. What it, you put in your body is equal to the quality of speed you can go. So if you're putting in a low quality oil in your car, you're going to get uh, uh, you know bad emissions coming out of the car, just like the body, and you're like, not. Uh, you mean? So yeah, like flatulence, have- of course. Flatulence, that's right. <clears throat> Flatulence. So, so number one, the gut is critical. Mm-hmm. So you got to treat your body exactly like a car. You got to have just the right fuel. If you're putting the wrong fuel in, too much sugar, too much caffeine. Um, I'll give you a quick example. I had uh, I stopped drinking coffee for the last uh, four weeks because I'm literally uh, going to fight COVID nineteen now, uh, down to the T. So I'm not really going to miss anything. Pardon the bad joke about the tea. Um, <clears throat> so, first thing is gut. So, anything you're putting in. When I had one glass of coffee, uh, just a small glass of coffee, uh, about five days ago, uh, I felt really drained for two days. Now, why is that? We don't realize how much pressure we're putting on a body that's already exhausted from the stress. And if it's physically stressed, you're going to be making wrong decisions. You're going to be doing things which uh, are not really going to be effective in your well-being. So anyway, that's a very simple point. So every coffee glass that you drink now, my word of advice is have three glasses of water to counter the effects of the caffeine. Okay. Okay. Um, so you say, uh, okay, we've not explained which that falls in because I said, is it the physical? The mental or the spiritual so are you saying it's a physical first is it making sure that the engine the fuel in your engine your stomach is correct and your gut being the catalyst is functioning properly is that what you're saying yeah i would say yeah for anything at all food is probably so critical. physical you've got to get the right fuel in your body excelente next sir <clears throat> the next is you could sort of say uh, you need exercise and movement and without that your uh, body's not gonna you're mentally not gonna be able to function well enough to be effective in your decision making because you release certain endorphins into your body and without the exercise you're not going to be able to release those endorphins you're going to be at a loose end and then you're going to make the wrong decisions and you're not you're not going to be centered when you pray or do any work in terms of your prayer or meditation <clears throat> and your focus and your mm-hmm. energy so your energy levels will be a lot higher if you just do the two basic things exercise and eat the perfect food not not the right food the perfect food you have to eat perfect. physical so you're saying mental after physical or is it spiritual and then mental which way around you mix them I'm both saying up. Gut, exercise, yeah, then uh, then mental, mental meaning uh, meditation, and also it can take form of uh, yoga or Pilates, uh, Kundalini yoga, all these Tai Chi, uh, or even just walking in the forest, forest bathing, uh, any of these four or five things, whichever take your fancy. So there's ample choice. If you just do those things, that's uh, that's your fifty percent there in terms of fighting COVID within yourself. First of all, and I think they're a must now. And I think uh, I've literally, uh, <clears throat> you know, trying to stay on track in terms of keeping those things on track and trying to. And you, some people may find that if they were doing these things already, they've done this. They may find that. Uh, their life is going to take a different angle this year because they're going to be a lot in lot more in tune with themselves. They may realize that uh, <clears throat> none of these problems are real, but in fact, they'll be working at a higher level of uh, manifestation as well. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to ask the very same question to Carolyn, but before I ask that, we've got a few comments that come in. Rajesh, obviously thanking us, not just me, because I am on my own, nothing without the people around me and the people that we have on the drive time. So I think he's thanking us for the motivational conversations we have, the deep conversations we sometimes have about 
uh, the topical questions that are coming to light, especially in uh, this uh, very, very uncertain time of lockdown. He also says it's probably a good idea to continually write down uh, gratitude or things of gratitude. I think it's an excellent tip. I think writing things down can make you focus. So that bit about being mentally sound can be reinforced by things like writing gratitude down. And remember we discussed a few days ago or last week and we brought it out yesterday. That is the word gratitude. I think the best thing that a lot of people are, have started to realize is being grateful for what they have got, not what they don't have. And that is itself uh, mental conditioning and spiritual atonement. Um, right, Carolyn. Yeah, Carolyn, if, can you answer the same question, please? And what do you think? Which way around do you think it is? Remember, uh, Raju says that we have 60,000 thoughts a day. That's a heavy amount of thinking that's going on. I know what I'm normally thinking about. I don't know what Karen is, but I definitely know what Lucky thinks about. So please tell me, Carolyn, which way around would you be doing it? If you have 60,000 thoughts a day, what does that say? Is the mental more important than the physical? Or is it the physical that's more important? Please tell me. You've just answered your own the thoughts are massive and so you have to learn to quieten the mind calm the body quieten in the mind how do you do that you have to learn to meditate because meditation brings about that space between thoughts and as you rehearse meditation so the thoughts get less and less and less we overthink we overanalyze we overdo everything and that's what i'm saying the COVID panic has created overthinking, over anxiety, and so you have to learn to meditate. And everybody has their different method of meditating. Lucky's just mentioned going out in the forest. I love that idea because I'm an outdoor person. So, yes, you've got an hour, you can get outdoors, you can find the nearest water because I live by the sea. You can find the nearest uh, woodland because you've got oxygen now. And you can get in touch with nature and you can actually calm yourself in nature. So all the meditative um, practice, like uh, VJ, I believe is uh, to learn to calm the mind. Okay. And physically, you have to move because otherwise the body is going to stagnate. And there are chemicals. So when I'm giving you two a compliment because you do the dry time a day to pop. You dope, you dope people because you create dopamine. And that means ah. a sense of community. You know, you've just been thanked by somebody listening here. If it hadn't been for you, they'd be on their own. You have to create a, a, a belonging to the community. And then once you've got that community spirit in heart, from heart, from heart if you're going out from an open heart mm -hmm. and you're moving, you spiritually you're being led to calm, and that will be health. Being calm is health. Not okay. being anxious is health. Not being okay. thinking and analyzing is health. So if I've got it right, Carolyn, you're saying calmness of the mind because we say like Rajesh brought out. Very importantly, what about yeah. 60,000 thoughts a day. day? So if we take that as being the primary point, so is it correct that you say calming the mind down? Is it the mind that has to be in order first before the gut gets cleaned? Because technically it does make sense. If you don't believe the food you're eating is going to make a difference, mentally, you're still going to be eating the same junk and then you're going to feed the negative mindset you've got and you're not going to be as into a situation where you can obtain spirituality or get a sense of proportional balance in your life 
So I, I tend to agree with what Carolyn says, if that's what you are saying, Carolyn, that the mind yeah. comes to more the gut or the body. It's, it's, it's the about, body. It's about your level of chemistry, isn't it? You know, how you can, you're using the chemicals to, I would say, promote positivity. And the only way you're going to do that is by incorporating this. And, and I know one of the listeners mentioned a journal, I call it journaling. Where you actually write down because if you if you don't write it down it's all in your head so if you've got it all going on in your head you're going oh christmas is you know just gone i i've got uh, debt i've got this i've got that it's just an ongoing spiral which takes you down physically it'll take you down so you have to come back up and stay calm remain calm get, get into nature on that one hour or if you can't get out you need air and you need to learn to breathe so that your actual breath is an indicator of health if you're somebody that uh, is aware of how you breathe and are you breathing well that's a good um, barometer of your health excellent okay we've got a comment in from uh mohsen uh rajani uh, who says uh, it's not really uh, about even getting out. It's about being positive mentally and enjoying. He said things like music. Actually, that's 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 a very simplistic and a very, I think, a very practical and a doable thing for lots of people, isn't it? If you just listen to a nice track on YouTube and have a good like a dance or a jump around. If you can't dance, just jump around with the music. But the point is, he's saying, whatever you do, you just need to enjoy it. You just need to feel good about it. And I think that's a very basic, achievable message for your mental health. So you're acquiring a mental uh, health by using something you enjoy, sound, the sound of a song or music, uh, using that to exercise, so mind, body and then soul that's i mean that it seems to be another way around so it's quite funny how if you listen to each different person and their concept of how they would focus on these three things each person has their own way of uh starting that activity but i think i actually agree with carolyn and i say it's the mind and i think lucky may already have a very strong focused mind when it comes to his body so he probably is using his mind but he's not described it in a way that we've understood it because he said it's your gut but obviously if you mentally know and decide that you want to have good food in your body then it's easy to let it's a bit like smoking people that i know who have tried using patches and all these other alternative solutions have ended up continuing to smoke somewhere and those people who've actually mentally decided to stop smoking have literally done it by ripping up the packet of cigarette they've got in their bag or in their pocket and just deciding they won't smoke anymore lucky Singh, what do you say sir is that bit is that probably now a bit more uh clearer in terms of what people should be trying to do is it not the mind then the first the 60,000 messages of thinking you've got going on there in your mind uh, and we put a like a, a rod or a meter in your head i'm sure we could power a few cities with it what do you say to that lucky thing yeah <clears throat> i think i agree with the statement i think uh so I think what I'm saying now at the moment is anybody out there who's thinking in the, I'm actually feeling stressed, um, I can't really see which way things are going to go. And this is quite depressing. And they're locked in some sort of psychology. Yeah, the, the first decision they've got to make is that uh, if they want to get out of problem, they need to do something different. They've got to make a change. It's a, it's a bit like smoking. Uh, to make that change, they've uh, you know got to put a nicotine patch on, say, if they were smoking. But in this case, because <clears throat> we're talking about mental health, 
I'm saying that one of the first decisions they're going to make is one of the things they can change is their diet. If they've got a fantastic diet already, then they don't need to worry. Um, but then if they're not exercising, then they need to consider doing some sort of exercise to get the circulation going. Um, yeah, so the decision does start in the brain, in the mind, to make a decision. Um, but all of these things are the basic pillars. So without them, you're not really going to be going very far, <clears throat> even though we are in lockdown. Boom, boom. So you've got to be doing the diet. I think certain people, they probably find the one work more simultaneously, really. Uh, more difficult than the other. And I think people who are quite strong. Mute. Okay. Sorry, I missed what you said, VJ. So, right, can you hear me now, Lucky? Because I think there's no. a bit of time delay. Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you clearly, yeah. Karen, can you hear me? I can. Something wrong with the internet? Are we frozen? What's the matter? Are you all right now? Are you back? Okay, cool. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. I think there's a you're freezing out for some reason. Okay, tier five and the effects it's going to have on unemployment. That's one of the things that we are looking at. We, we obviously we've sort of waned off towards uh, the three important things the mind, the body, and the soul. But what about when you've lost your job? How do you continue? Once there is no work immediately in front of you, you've got nothing in front of you to look forward to or to uh, to set as a goal. And I think uh, Martin says it's important to try and learn something new, and I agree with that. Uh, and be the change is the word he uses for that that you need to try and learn something new. I think that's keeping your mind active in trying to learn new things while you're in this uh, difficult uh, period of lockdown. But the problem seems to be that everybody isn't as strong or mentally tuned or spiritually as tuned as is Karen or Lucky. And some people seem to find the matter of spirituality a distant away from the mental position, and they find the physical position uh, a distant away from the mental position. Mm -hmm. So, for somebody who's finding it difficult, which one is easiest? I think is going to be a person. You're frozen, VJ Sal. I think uh, VJ Sal's gone into real lockdown. He has. Can you, can you hear me okay, Carolyn? Yes, I can hear you. I think it's frozen. He's frozen. So... You know what that means? Let it go, let it go. <laughs> let it go. I love Mossin's idea of music. So, you know, people have um, different ways of coping and music just brings joy to people in whatever fashion it is. And I was fortunate because in London, I joined the London Central YMCA training the teachers and they, they had exercise to music. So, you know, wherever you are, if, and I know you, like you saying, love moving. If you've got that joy of listening to music and moving with it and loving what you do, that's the start. And I, I'm smiling at um, how you said you are fueling your gut. There's very few people who understand the microbes in the gut. And I'm, I'm somebody that's had a bad gut, um, not because of bad eating, but because of bacteria. And once you have that, you you little pots that you can buy. I'm actually 
drinking every morning um, gin ginger and turmeric. So I do that every morning to, to top my gut up. So all these things are essential, but if we are constantly bombarded by negative news uh, day after day, then I don't blame anybody feeling the way they are, isolated and anxious. You know, that, that's a natural response. But it's up to people like us to say, no, 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 there are other ways of dealing with it. So would you say that uh, the biggest impact is mental health uh, for people in the UK now in terms Absolutely. of uh, the lockdown? Yeah, because we're in winter, don't forget, and normal uh, winters in Britain are pretty um, changeable, you know, wet days, cold days, freezing days. And so we, we have the sad syndrome going on with a lot of people naturally because they don't have enough vitamin D from sunshine. And so you, you again, you go back to vitamins. How do you create vitamin D? Well, you've got to get out in into the fresh air. So lockdown means you can't, but you you know you do have an hour to do it to so get out for that hour. And so BJ Sell is back. I'm now. back. Sorry about that. I think we had some break in uh, communication, so we're back now. Sorry about that. Just sorry, Caroline. I got the last bit of what you said. Uh, something about using the hour that you have got and making sure you do get out to that. Is that right? Yeah, because it's a sad thing, really. In the winter time, normal winter time, regardless of lockdown, we do suffer in Britain because we don't have enough sunlight. So a lot of people are aware of we need sunlight for health, and we do. So uh, we were talking about music, we were talking about moving, we were talking about sunlight. And people, when they're locked down, they're kept away from all these natural things. Nature provides it, so we've got to think naturally. Excellent. Caroline, you've got seven hearts because of that. Thank you so much. Lovely lady. Right, Zubair says, it's an excellent opportunity now for us to start actually thinking technology. I think, yes, it is. I think the problem is... forward in the last 10 years that even uh you know middle-aged fuddy duddies like uh, lucky sings age group even they are finding it difficult to keep up with us in terms of using technology and uh for those people who are obviously of uh you know senior citizens we want to call them they've probably been left behind and they're sort of like just catching up with using uh you know uh, the uh the zoom or the the live stream and stuff and i think yes it is an opportunity but nothing uh oh so i think the point uh, that uh vj sounds it has come back on again now Right. So I'm saying that um, Zubar, uh, one of the persons watching us, says it's probably an excellent opportunity to start using technology. And I do agree with him. And unfortunately, I think there's a certain age group that has been left behind because technology has moved so fast forward. And I can remember not less than 15 years ago, we were still on the small digital telephones and the brick phones and stuff and from there all of a sudden android and then the you know the rise of androids and and, and uh what's it now the fingertip recognition and uh, the, the, the the screen saver and all that's come in it's made it's made you know te telecom really uh, more convenient and easy so there's a big gap there where people who are from the older generation may it be uh, that they're being left behind and i think for those people who are used to having a kissy and a huggy and shaking palms with people it may be quite different it may be quite frustrating because um making the best of the situation i think is all you can do you can't really rewrite what the uh statutory law that's been uh sort of created because of this pandemic has done 
But what you can do is, like Carolyn said, you've got to get out. You've got to get that one hour. Even you go out and just lie down on the ground outside in the garden or uh, in the park. Do it. Do something in that one hour. Treasure that one hour. Being grateful for what you have around you and outside of you, outside of your uh, electronic you know your televisions and your microwaves and everything that's been created maybe that is an excellent opportunity to go back to nature and i think we were having we had a conversation last week with the likes of deborah who's a you know a person who really doesn't allow the news or the environment to affect her and she was saying look you know just have to start connecting with people and allowing mm -hmm. that connection to transmit positivity i think um right let me see what do you say to that do you take you know that one hour graciously and mindfully to go out and enjoy the one hour you get and is that the is that the statutory time you've been allowed in london one hour out only <clears throat> yeah i think so one hour is the is the time period that's allowed um once a day um which i think is not too bad because you can I think the key thing is just to get out and uh, at least get a bit of sunshine if it's there um so i think um in without the lockdown there you used to go out sometimes for about a four or five hour maybe six hour walk uh just to get fit as well so but there's nothing stopping anybody you know exercising in their garden and walking around in their garden for another couple of hours if they wanted to or do some sort of activity in the garden to keep themselves fit so the restrictions are really uh, not necessarily as uh, you know big obstacles as some people might think because they think they've got an hour uh, but i think if you went to an hour in one minute it's not going to make a major difference especially if you're the only person in the park there's nobody else is in there and it's midnight yeah <laughs> so uh i think uh yeah i think reasonability is uh, is probably where it starts from okay, can you hear us okay yes i can perfect right we've got rajesh who says that he was uh, he lost his job last year we're talking about the lockdown we're talking about tier five and unemployment. We've got a live example through Rajesh. He says he lost his job last year, March 2020. Yeah. He decided to re engineer himself and now he's doing business. Uh, and he mentioned something called SAD, an acronym. I think it's called Seasonal Affective Disorder. That's right, right. So is that something that's affecting lots of people now in terms of, uh, you know, the way they are reacting to what's happening. Because I know the season and the way the, like I think, uh, was it Mary last week said, you know, she, it was gets dark quicker and getting dark quicker seems to have a gloomier feeling, even though it's the same as any other day. Is that right? It's that hour change that makes a big difference to um, sunlight, huge, huge change. And anybody who has a pet, that's another example. If you take a, a doggy or you know anything for a walk outside, you notice that by around about four o'clock, it's dark. So yeah, you, you know, you're losing sunlight. So we have to get up earlier and you have to um, join you guys in the live you know, drive at eight o'clock in the morning. You just got to get up earlier to have that um, awareness of making the most sunlight excellent okay so sunlight is a key thing isn't it is it does that vitamin d is it lucky is that i think uh, is what one of the the benefits the vitamin d deficiency gets replaced so you don't have to rely too much on tablets and stuff well rajesh says uh zumba obviously that's probably a good way of replacing your vitamin d loss zumba and ai uh and then we have sonia come back after a few days yes. Hi, yes love to sonia 
and uh, oh, yeah. some really really ill with covid so yeah so it's very sad to hear okay Sonia's a you know like a regular listener she's always got some very good comments to make very sad to hear she's been affected i had no clue lucky did you know no i think uh she's obviously not been able to do much so she's probably kept a low profile yeah. okay I think uh, but anyway we're sending out prayers for your wellness i'm gonna try and, what i'm gonna try and do is if we can have in the group the alternative business and property solutions group some special message that goes out for people who may be affected because there may be lots of support i think lucky that could be given to people when they're a bit uh you know uh, fearful of having caught the virus because remember there is a fear element that also kicks in that makes people think they've got something that they're not don't really have and uh, i think if we can have something on the group for all those people who are on the group at least giving something back to everybody on the group if we can give them some support very sorry to have i'm sorry to hear that but uh could you kindly dial in then it'd be lovely to hear your voice uh, i think we're running out of time today what's the time how much time have we got left? Three minutes. If we can have Sonia try and dial in, we'll give you the code. We'll put it into the group, Sonia. Try and dial in and give everyone a shout. Let's just see how you are and just give you a you know a bit of a uh, a support to say, look, uh, things will get better. Hope you do feel better. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a didn't know she was, and thank you very much, Carolyn, for bringing that to us. Let me sing. Yes. Sonia actually um, spoke to me last night on WhatsApp and I knew she had been struggling uh, with a heavy head cold but I'd asked did she have a test and it was only as a result of having the test that she now realises. So what she's hit with is tiredness, constant tiredness. So well, to that, have her on this morning is unbelievably a privilege to all of us. Okay, Lucky, uh, you you know you mentioned the other day you've went through quite a long phase of unknown uh, virus because you obviously didn't know you had it at that time. There wasn't that advanced uh, knowledge out there. What what advice can you give to uh, Sonia? You know anything that you've got uh, in, from your memory that you could just I give think her Sonia. A um, there's about uh, twelve different strains, so it depends really how bad it is. That uh, the one I had uh, wasn't super super bad, but it, it's quite debilitating. I think what I've understood, it takes about a year to get rid of, mm. and you need to really be exercising regularly, eating better, and I think it's um, it's not easy to shake off. I think I can still feel it in my veins this very moment because okay, it's yeah. uh, uh, probably looking fixing for your system. More than the negative, but I understand what you're saying. So, Carolyn. <laughs> so I think ex exercise and lots of water to get it out of your system. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, regular exercise is probably the most important thing. Give her something to focus on. So, Sonia, lots of love. Can you kindly, lots of water. I think I would suggest hot water, just like tea water, like uh, the type of water Chinese uh, tea is drank in. So it's hot tea water. Drink lots of that and try and take exercise. I think that those are the two tips immediately. And I think uh, if you've got body pains, uh, I think that's the best thing to get rid of whatever is in your, in your body at the moment. And we do hope you feel better. And I'd love to have you on tomorrow. We've got Mandy on. And if you can get Sonia, if you do feel better to come on, even for a quick hello shout out, it may just be a way of focusing yourself and getting yourself uh better by you know interacting and being on the uh the live stream with us son is carolyn thank you so much for your lovely time today you've got lots of love hearts being sent your way lots of people are obviously appreciating your kind words lucky Singh, again thank you very much for your input the drive time 8 a.m to 9 a.m every morning with the Alternative Business and Property Solutions community, with Lucky Singh, the Property Fixer. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. Take care, everybody. And we will talk about Tier 5, the lockdown, and the effects it has on unemployment, because there is going to be quite a downfall.